Welcome back aliens, my name is Evan Vedi and in this video we'll talk about Docker architecture. In fact, we have talked about what is Docker, we have seen how to install Docker, how to pull images from the repository and then we were able to run the containers as well. But then now it's time to understand what is happening behind the scene and then the best way to understand that is by understanding the architecture. Now in this architecture, the first thing I want to talk about is the way Docker was made. So initially Docker was made as a monolithic application which means one package or one thing will have everything. But then Docker is very famous in the world of microservices where you create multiple services, right? And then why Docker is monolithic? Now Docker has a lot of components and each component has a special work to do, right? So now if you talk about the main component of Docker is Docker engine. And if you talk about Docker engine, we have certain parts there. Now the software which you have installed on your machine, you can call it as Docker engine. So the things we have in Docker is we have a Docker repository, which is on the remote server. And now we are not responsible to manage that, right? We are responsible to manage our machine, our Docker system, and that's your Docker engine. Now this Docker engine, if you look at the diagram, we have three sections here. The first one is a client. Now when a user sends the request, the request goes to the client. Now the terminal which we have worked on, uh, so that interacts with the Docker client, which is a Docker CLI basically. And now this request, now whatever command you pass, let's say if you want to pass a command for run, if you want to pass a command for pull the image or delete the image or remove the image. Now all this thing goes to the server. Now we can call it as a Docker daemon or in short, we can call it as Docker D. That's very famous, right? Uh, so we have Docker daemon who will do the work for you. But then how a client will interact with a server? Are they on the same machine? And the answer is yes, if the system which we have worked on, the client and the server was on the same machine. And the way they interact is with the help of REST API. The server or the daemon will have a lot of endpoints and then for different work, we have, they have different endpoints. So the client will send the request to the, to the Docker daemon. Now using this, you can manage your volumes, you can manage your containers, you can manage your images. Now there's one thing important about volumes which we are going to talk about later, but then remember one thing, as a container, container can run your application plus container can also store data. But then if you talk about volumes, in fact, volume can also st store data, but we'll talk about that in, in some time. Now if you focus on the actual architecture of Docker, it looks something like this. We have a client, now this client will pass commands, right? So you can pass any commands you want. Of course, the command which is accepted by the Docker. Then we have a Docker host. Now Docker host has this amazing service called as Docker daemon. Now this daemon is responsible to accept the commands from the client and perform the operation. Operations like managing your container. It will get a container for you. It will manage the images. Now if you really focus on this Docker daemon, the question is, can it really create containers for you? And the answer is no. See, as I talked about, we have a lot of different services for different work, right? So if Docker daemon gets a request for the container, the request goes to the container D. Now container D is a special service which is responsible to manage the life cycle of your container. Okay, Th that means the container can be created or run by container D. Uh, not exactly. This actual work is done by Run C. Now Run C is a special service who is responsible to create containers for you. It will simply create a container and this job is done, it will go out. That means if you want to run multiple containers, if you want to run five containers, you need five run C. That's not the case with container D, just one in one machine. Now question arises from where you will get all these images. And for the, of course, for that we have a repository or to be specific, it is called as registry. The famous one is Docker Hub, but then there are different options available as well. Now coming back to the container, see as a as an application, when you when you run the application that will be run that will be running inside a container, and your application want to store some data. Now, container itself provides you some writable files, and you can use them. So you can create files, and you can save it on the container. But the problem is, once you destroy the container, you will lose the data as well. See, you can you can save data in the container. When you stop the container, data is still there. When you come back in the resume state, the the data is still there. But what if you stop and when you destroy the container? you will lose the data. I want to preserve the data and that's how you, that's where you use volumes. Uh, so using volumes, you can store your data. Now there's one thing important, if you want to store data in containers, we have different storage drivers basically. Uh, one of the famous driver which we are going to use is Overlay 2. There are other drivers av available as well, which are a bit old and which are a bit outdated, but then o Overlay 2 is awesome. 
Now, one thing is important to remember, in fact, we have talked about that in the previous video as well. Uh, if we talk about the Docker host, we have a lot of images, right? And with one image, you can create multiple containers, okay? So you can have maybe thousands of containers running and uh, you can have multiple images, but for one image, you can get multiple containers. That's something you have to remember. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for the further videos. Bye.